Hi, in this chapter we are going to talk about sorting algorithms. So, what's the aim of sorting? Of course, a sorting algorithm is an algorithm that puts elements and items of a given array in a certain order. Usually, this array is a one-dimensional array of integers, doubles, floats, strings or custom objects. What does it mean that in a certain order, for example numbers, it can be the numerical ordering or for strings and characters, it can, it can be the alphabetical ordering. There are two types of sorting algorithms, comparison-based algorithms and non-comparison-based algorithms. Comparison-based algorithms such as bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, merge sort and quick sort. So during the algorithm we compare the items, whether they are integers, they are floats or strings, we compare them. And we have the non-comparison based sorting such as the radix sort and the bucket sort. These algorithms have nothing to do with comparing items. We are not going to compare the items like we will do for bubble sort, insertion sort and so on. So we will have the comparison based ones and the non-comparison based ones. Okay, what about the most important features for sorting algorithms? First of all, the type complexities. All of the sorting algorithms can have three different running time complexities. Ordo n squared, so quadratic running time complexity, it is not that favorable. Then it can have a logarithmic running time, ordo n log n, and this is what we are looking for. And of course we have the non-comparison based algorithms running time, the so-called linear, so ordo and running time complexity. Ok, so that's all about the time complexities. A sorting algorithm can be in place, which means that strictly an in place sort needs only ordo 1 memory beyond the items being sorted. So an in-place algorithm doesn't need any extra memory. We are able to make the sorting operations locally without any additional memory. Sorting algorithms can be recursive and non-recursive. Some sorting algorithms are implemented in a recursive manner, especially the divide and conquer ones such as merge sort and quick sort. And a sorting algorithm can be stable or not stable. Stable sorting algorithms maintain the relative order of records or items with equal values. Let's consider the in-place feature. For example, we have a one-dimensional array to be sorted. 4, 12, minus 3, 32 and 16. An in-place algorithm will not allocate any extra memory, for example, a temporary array in order to make the sorting. And we are able to make the sorting operation with the half of the array containing the items we would like to sort. For example, merge sort, we are going to split this array into smaller and smaller ones, so we definitely need some extra memory. But for example, quick sort is able to sort this one dimensional array without any additional memory. So merge sort is not in place but quick sort is an in-place sorting algorithm. So, just to summarize again, if we have an array of integers and we don't need any extra slots for example or any extra memory, the algorithm is in place, such as quick sort. Ok, of course why is it good to have algorithms that are in place? Because it's going to be memory efficient. Let's suppose the fact that, for example, we would like to sort all the data concerning Facebook or, for example, all the data concerning Google. Of course, if we need lots of lots of extra memory, then it's going to be very difficult because Google and Facebook have millions and millions of terabytes of information. So that's why sometimes it's very, very crucial to have an in-place sorting algorithm. Okay. What about the stable feature? Let's suppose the fact that before the sorting operation, we have a one dimensional array of integers 4, 12, minus 3, 12 and 16. We have two items with the same values. Okay, 
after the sorting operation, the relative order of the items with the same value may change. In this case, the yellow 12 precedes the red 12 before the sorting operation and it is true after the sorting operation. In this case we say that it is a stable sorting algorithm because the relative order of the items with the same value is not going to be changed. As you can see the yellow precedes the red and after the sorting operation yellow precedes the red. Ok, this is a stable sorting algorithm. It may be the case that after the sorting operation the relative order has changed. In this case we say that the sorting algorithm is not stable. So the relative order of equal items remain the same, the red 12 is after the yellow 12 even after sorting. So for example merge sort is a stable algorithm but quick sort is an unstable one. Ok, we have been talking about the running time complexities for sorting algorithms and we have come to the conclusion that we can have the ordo n squared, so quadratic running time, we can have the ordo n log n linear rhythmic running time and we can have the linear running time sorting algorithms. In general, for sorting n items we have to make log n factorial comparisons. With Stirling formula we can reduce it to n log n. So the theta n log n time complexity is the lower bound for comparison based sorting algorithms. It's basic math. We are not able to make less comparisons than n log n because for n items we have to make log n factorial comparisons for sure. So we are not able to do better with the help of comparison based sorting. Ok, but we can achieve ordo and linear time complexities as far as sorting is concerned such as the bucket sort or the radix sort. Ok, how come? Because these algorithms such as bucket sort or radix sort are not comparison based algorithms. If we want to make better than n log n, we have to use something different from comparison based sorting and bucket sort and radix sort do exactly this. So if we want to achieve ordo and linear running time, we have to use algorithms that do not rely on comparing items. Ok, so that's all about the main features such as comparison based and non-comparison based algorithms stable and non-stable algorithms and in place and not in place algorithms. In the coming lectures we are going to talk about the given sorting algorithms on a one by one basis. Thanks for watching.